Hello, I'm Atuba George, and this is a new week, praise God. So I'm so excited to bring God's word to you today. And hey, this is the last week of the month of April. I don't know how the month has been for you, but I'm ready to tell you something. God is not done with all his plans for you this month. And I'll show you this one thing. By the end of this month, there is nothing that God has ordained for you that you are going to miss. So praise God, don't get, it. don't get sad, rather get excited for what God is about to do in your life. Praise God. So join us this week as I begin to share the thoughts of God in your heart and it will help you to keep a focus and receive everything that God has planned for you. Before we go into the broadcast, remember the Lord commanded us to call for that daily bread. So if you are ready to do that and receive a miracle, join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I began to share with you last week. You know, we've been taking it a series the whole month. So, so last week we were talking about the testimony of Jesus. And that's the same thing I'm going to tie to what I'm sharing with you today. But today, this, this week, we're going to go deeper and, and how this affects you. And, and I want you to be expectant. See, because whenever we talk about Jesus, something happens. The name itself carries power. And so whenever we talk about him, he shows up. And if you are ready, like I am, for him to show up in your life, then we're in agreement talking about him. And listen, I expect things to change around you. I expect, cause, cause he, Anyone who believes, and that's all I enjoy you today, open your hearts to believe. These things we talk about is real. The Bible is real. Everything you read about in the Bible is true. You see, there are books you read and people say what they want to say. But you see, the Bible is a book of truth. Everything you read in this book happened. There is no lie in it. And that's why it's a good book to believe. But you see, believing the Bible opens you up to another experience. Because the one the Bible talks about, he is not dead. He's alive, still alive, will continue to be alive, praise God. So you know what? Everything you read in the Bible that he did, you are creating another atmosphere for him to do it again. So you now become a carrier of the testimony that what the Bible said, it's true. Now that's the mindset you should have as a believer. That's the mindset you should have as one who read and believe the Bible. Everything I read about in scriptures that Jesus did, he can do it again today. There is nothing he did back then that he has stopped doing for your good for your benefit. He went as far as dying. He went as far as giving his life for you. You know what scripture tells us? What is it that he is going to withhold from you? If, if he was willing to give his life for you, what is it you can think about that he will withhold from you? As I told you last week, I said, don't be afraid to ask him anything. Even if it sounds stupid in your ears, as long as you can open your mouth and say to him, 
I'm telling you what he's going to do. He will answer you. I explained that to you last week. He will answer you according to what you are saying, not even according to what you are speaking. He will answer you according to that which you need, not just what you think you want. And the beauty of it is when he answers what you need, you realize that you are actually wanting the wrong thing. Praise God. So, so ask him anything. That's what he said. Ask anything. Thing in my name, I will do it. Praise God. That's Jesus for you. So let's go into the scriptures now and look at uh main scripture for this um, segment. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Now we are really concerned about the B part. It says, but I'll read the whole verse 10. It says, and I fell at his feet to worship him John speaking here but he said to me see that you do not do that I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus then he gave an instruction he says worship God why for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, this is something I want you to really take time to meditate on. The spirit of prophecy. What is the spirit of prophecy? You see, I'll tell you this. It is by the spirit of prophecy, a prophecy is given. Then it takes the spirit of prophecy for the prophecy to be fulfilled. You see, sometimes, you know, that's how you, you come to understand that God doesn't forget. See, I'll give you an example. God spoke to Abraham and told him, hey, Abraham was asking him about a son. And God now told him something. He said, no for surety that your children you will be in a foreign land and they will serve them and they will torment them for 400 years. And God said, after 400 years, I will bring them out and they will come out with great substance. Now think about this. God spoke this thing well, many, many years. Now, he didn't just speak the word and the prophecy started that day and then you now begin to count 400 years so someone might have been counting with him no he says your seed and that didn't happen until the days of joseph so think about it as at the time god spoke this prophecy abraham had no son he had no son and he lived many years before he had a son after god said those words I want you to follow me now. So he lived for many years, maybe up to 30 years after God made that statement to him. And then he had a son. And having gotten a son, think about this. Isaac grew, and I think Isaac got married about 60 years or thereabout. So, so think. And Isaac had a son. Um, um, yeah, Isaac had, had got married and had two sons. Now, Jacob grew up and got married and had children. And then the children became matured and one of them, Joseph, was sold as a slave into Egypt. And jo Joseph became about 30 years old. And when he was 30 years old, that was when God exalted him. And guess what? Now, after he was 30 years old, then the prophecy of, the, of them getting in to Egypt began. And then they stayed there and joined them. So they didn't go into Egypt as slaves. They went into Egypt with a grand welcome, praise God. And, and they, they started living there until the Egyptians, the Bible says, a, a new Pharaoh came up because that Pharaoh died. And a new Pharaoh came up who did not know Joseph. 
And that was when their torment started. Now think about this. They began to suffer. No one was keeping timing of the prophecy that God have said. No one was looking at it and say, oh, God said 400 years. So now how many years are we now? No. But when the time of the fulfillment came, God himself appeared to Moses at the mountain. You remember the burning bush experience. Now, what do you think was happening there? The same spirit that spoke, the same spirit of prophecy that spoke to Abraham was the same spirit of prophecy that was at work when God met Moses. And that same spirit was directing every affairs of Moses. Now notice, God didn't just say, after 400 years, I will bring them out. He particularly said, I will bring them out with great substance. And when the spirit of prophecy was at work, now that, this is why I always tell God's children, we don't struggle to fulfill prophecies. We yield to the spirit of prophecy to fulfill. He said, the reason is this, if, if you are struggling to fulfill prophecy, you will miss aspects of that prophecy. Because you see, with your mind, you cannot fully comprehend the extent of what God has said. Yeah. So now, imagine if you were there in Egypt, suffering all those things you were suffering. And God now says, look, it is time to deliver you. I bet you, the last thing that will be in your mind will be what God said concerning living with great substance. At that point, you just want to live anyhow. I'm, I'm tired of being a slave. You know what? I just want to live here and go start my own life. <laughs> it is God. But God was true to every letter of the word that he spoke. He, he, he told Moses, he said, look, I'm going to give the children of Israel favor before the Egyptians. And they are going to ask them for anything they want. And the Egyptians will give it to them. Well, you see, at the beginning, it will sound, okay, praise God, at least we've labored. But by the time they had suffered Pharaoh's refusal for many times, you just want to leave Egypt. But God, who was true to his word, saw to it that at the right time, he gave the children of Israel the instruction, go ask the Egyptians, ask them anything you want from them. See, why am I telling you this? There is the spirit of prophecy. There is the spirit of prophecy. And that spirit of prophecy, you yield to it. And what is the spirit of prophecy, brothers and sisters? That is what he tells us here. He tells us here that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So what is the spirit of prophecy? The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. And last week I explained to you what the testimony of Jesus is. Testimony of Jesus is what Jesus testifies about a thing. Because you see, Jesus made a profound statement. He said, I do not speak of my own authority. As I hear, so I speak. Wow. Meaning, I'm not speaking out of my mind. I yield to the Spirit of God to give me utterance on what to say. Do you know what that means? See, that's why everything Jesus said, he wasn't saying anything new. Everything Jesus said, he was saying things that have been ordained from the beginning. See? You see, now, thank you, Holy Spirit. Our time is even up. <laughs> Praise God. But get this before we close. You don't struggle to fulfill prophecy. You yield to fulfill prophecy. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you this week. And truly expect a miracle praise god expect a miracle because something good is going to happen in your life today god bless you i'll see you tomorrow bye